Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I hope you'll stick around to see our homeschool journey. My name is Jamie, and I'm a homeschool mama of three boys. They are eight, six, and 19 months old. This week, I wanna share with you a glance into what we are doing this week in homeschool. So I'm gonna start and show you what I'm doing for my kids for reading, grammar, and writing, and then I'll go from there. So this week in reading, we are focusing on the book, The Rough Face Girl which is a Native American folk tale, I would say. And this is a really good book. I actually have never read this book before. And I even owned it. I picked this up from the kids library in there. And I never read it. So it was a really good book. It's about how this girl is scarred and everyone in the town is mean to her and her sisters are mean to her. Kind of like the stepsisters in Cinderella are mean to her. But um, she can see this invisible man and then that she goes off and marries the invisible man and he can see her true beauty which is the beauty of inside because she's kind-hearted and thoughtful and her two twin sisters are beautiful on the outside but they're mean and evil and cruel so it's a really good book and this week what we are focusing on for reading is having a mental image and like seeing the book in your head and also we're focusing on comparing and contrasting and in this story, we're comparing and contrasting the sisters, the, the two old sisters, to the young sister. And we're also comparing and contrasting Cinderella, the story Cinderella, to the Rough Face Girl story. So those are the two different things that we're going to be comparing. And now I'm going to show you some of the work they've already done this week, and then I'm going to show you some of the work they're going to continue to do. So for today, we did a compare and contrast, and we compared the other sisters to the rough girl face girl and then their similarities so we did that today and then some of the things that we have done in their notebook so far this week we did stuff yesterday and today and their notebooks are getting very full so every day we focus on vocabulary words and we also focus on a thing so here we have visualizing in the story and they had to visualize what the, um, what the man looked like, the invisible man, and what the older sister saw him as, and then what the younger sister, the rough-faced girl, saw him as. We did two vocabulary words last week, yesterday, I'm sorry, and they were miserable and vanished, and they had to do a little writing to go with that. We talked about the vocabulary words, and then they had to put them in ABC order, which is what he did right here. We also... In grammar, we were doing adjectives, and we described the two characters. And then here they had to do a sort, where they had to sort nouns, adjectives, and verbs, which are some of the things we have been learning about um, over the past weeks. Today, what they did in their notebooks was we did our vocabulary word stammer and insisted, and they had to do a little activity with that. Then we read about wigwams, and we did the little questions because that's what they lived in in our story was wigwams. And then they had to retell the story to us and do a beginning, a middle, and an end. And then they also, he was supposed to glue this in his notebook, but he didn't. It says we can describe the characters and they use adjectives to describe the younger sister to the older sister. And we just use kind of the same words that we used from our chart. So that's some of the work we've already completed this week for the Rough Faced Girl. Some of the other things that we are going to be doing is we're going to be reading this Native American Way of Life. It is a nonfiction reader that actually comes with the curriculum. And I will leave the link to the curriculum down below. They'll be doing a vocabulary read and match. Tomorrow we'll be describing the characters again and we'll be using adjectives to describe the Rough Faced Girl. The kids will draw a picture of her doing the directed drawing that they provide. And then they would write about the character, something they liked about her or, or enjoyed about the story. <clears throat> For our grammar that day, we're gonna be doing adjectives where they have to look at a picture and I'll like cut these out and I'll post them all around the room. And then they'll have to go look for it, and then they'll have to write two adjectives to describe that picture. So the first one's a cup of coffee or a hot cocoa. So they could say hot and yummy. 
and that'll be our activities tomorrow and then on Thursday there's a little basket of adjectives activity that they will create they'll make this little craft and we'll put um, adjectives on the leaves we will read Cinderella on Thursday and they'll compare and contrast Cinderella and the rough faced girl and then they also have a little thing where they can make a connection with that how are they alike and how are they are different and then on Friday with our story they'll do a little quiz on it and then there's a little vocabulary quiz that I like to give for writing they will do this little craft where they're gonna do have a wishing wand and they're gonna make the wishing wand and then they're gonna say if they had a fairy godmother and they could make one wish, what would their wish be? And then for grammar, we're doing the adjectives. Here's the sentences. I'll post again the sentences around the room. They have to go find the adjectives and record the adjectives in the sentence. So like A says, the poor man lived in the village. So the adjective is poor. And again, these are from the story. Those sentences are. And that is all we're doing this week. And I was super excited because when, when I talk about my loop schedule here soon, you'll see that my loops are completely different because from here until Thanksgiving, our loops are going to pertain around the first Thanksgiving. That's all they'll be about is Thanksgiving. And then starting in December, all they'll be about is either holidays around the world or holiday stories. I'm not sure yet which way I'm going to go. And so you won't see any like normal loop schedule. All my loops will be a box around that. And I thought this went perfect because it was a Native American folktale and it kind of had like Native American ways of life. So it kind of gave my kids some background knowledge before we actually get to that part. So that is all of our reading for the week. For math, my um, youngest son is still working on addition, uh, subtraction and place value. My oldest son is still working on place value. Um, in spelling, they're still doing their spelling words. Um, my oldest son this week actually has a review of all the words he's covered from lesson 6 to lesson 10. And it's all your blends. So B-L-D-R-F-L-P-L. Um, I'm trying to think of some more. It's a, a mixture of all of his blends. And then my youngest son this week, his word is the short O sound. They're still doing their head sprout on the computer. Um, for phonics, my six-year-old does do his sight words and his phonics. And for phonics, he's also doing the short O. And he's doing the book, the tot, and the pot. And like, these are his phonics words that he'll have to read. These are his review words that we'll go over. He'll also have to create these words like with magnetic letters. And then here are some of his sight words for the week. A lot of these are review, and then on the back is his new ones, which is off, with, and solve. And then he has some little fun activities in there as well. And then, for reading, I kind of let them just pick what book they want to read to me. My um, oldest is reading a Goosebump book. He's in the chapter book, so he just kind of reads a little bit every day. My middle son, he um, reads to me today. He read A Tap and a Pat. And I just let him kind of pick what books he wants to read. And mainly he picks his phonics books because he's confident with those. Um, so for our loop schedule, yesterday we didn't have loop. Because loop schedule was our homeschool group. And it was my turn to host it. And we took and did a diagram of the planet Earth with Play-Doh. Which was really cool. Like we did like the red in the inside was your inner core, your outer core, and we made the diagram, and when you cut the earth in half, you open it up, and you can see all the little layers of the earth, and I read them a Magic School Bus book, and we had a coloring sheet to go with the layers of the earth. That's what we did yesterday for our loop schedule, because it was homeschool group, and then they always have lunch together and play together. Today's loop schedule is starting our Mayflower activities. Um, and so this whole week for Thanksgiving, we'll focus on the Mayflower. That's all we'll focus on. The books that I'm going to be using this week is, if you were at the first Thanksgiving, and I'm actually going to be using this for the entire 
curriculum. And then Pilgrim Children on the Mayflower. And some of the activities that we're going to do is if you go to scholastic.com, and I'm going to leave the link down below, it's completely free. They have everything for you. And you can tour the ship. You can see um, memoirs of people who live there. There's videos. Um, so we're going to do the whole part with the Mayflower. We're going to tour the ship. We're going to listen to the stories of the people that were on the Mayflower. We're going to do like the chart where the Mayflower went and like the dates. We're going to read these two books. And then some of the other activities I pulled out was I did this little poem, which was called The Pilgrims on the Mayflower. And I found this from Teachers Pay Teachers. It was free. And then it had pieces with it. And I glued them to felt so that I could do the story of the poem on my felt board. I thought they would really like that. So that is one of the activities I have planned for this week. I don't know if you can tell a difference with this video, and I'm sorry if you can, but my phone um, memory is completely full, so I'm, I had to switch from my phone to my computer camera, so I'm sorry if you can tell a difference. I am going to edit the video, so hopefully it's not too big of a notice, but anyways, that's that right. So for Thanksgiving unit this week, they're also going to do this sheet, where they're going to name what they would take if they were traveling on the Mayflower, and then... I have this little STEM activity where we're actually going to make, with tinfoil, the Mayflower. They're going to take their little pilgrims and they're going to put it on their Mayflower and we're going to put it in some water and we're going to see if the pilgrims fit on their boat, first of all, and then if the boat sank or float. And again, here is the little activity where they can draw it and uh, talk about it. And again, I got this again from Teachers Pay Teachers. It was completely free. I will leave all these links down below. But that's where I got all of these papers. We are going to have a snack of the Mayflower Munchies, which I also found on Teachers Pay Teachers. And it talks about what they ate or like what's going to represent it. So they're saying soup crackers and beef jerky. Um, then the stick pretzels remind us of the logs the pilgrim used to build their homes. Mini marshmallows to remind us of the cold that they lived through. Teddy grams to remind us that they had to fight off wild animals once they got off the Mayflower. Lifesaver candy uh, to remind us the friends that pilgrims made with the Squanto. And then trick cereal to remind us of the fruits and berries the pilgrims ate to survive in the new land. Tricks cereal. So we're going to do that on Friday as a little activity because we'll be talking next week about once they got off the Mayflower. Another activity they're going to do is they have this little writing, and it's a craft. So they're going to create their boat, and then they're going to write about what it was like for them to be on the Mayflower. So that is pretty much all I have planned for this week, is to use the Scholastic to do the tour of the boat, the little activities that it comes with, to read this one, to read parts of this book. We're just going to read the parts that talk about the Mayflower. And then the different little activities I just showed you. If I come up with any more, I might add them in. But right now, that's all I really have. Um, that's all I really have for them for the week of her, the Mayflower. Also, tomorrow is Veterans Day. So I will, tomorrow for Loop, instead of doing these for Loop, I will be doing like a Veterans Day story and a Veterans Day video from Brain Pop Jr., which I'll leave linked down below. We have family coming in tomorrow. Um, to spend the day with us so it's whatever school we get done and then we're done I consider it like an early release so we'll start that morning we'll do what we can do and then once the family arrives whatever we did not get done I'll just mark it off as we'll do it we'll catch up the next day because uh, that's an early release day for us because we have family coming in and the kids were really good like they already did their spelling they did some of the work ahead of time that way they would have less to do tomorrow but I think that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel to see more homeschool videos. And I am super excited to share with you our Thanksgiving. So make sure you check next week to see what activities I have planned for our Thanksgiving unit for next week. Thank you.